Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Sama, and I'm the Programs Manager at the Gardner Museum. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge that the Gardner Museum operates on the ancestral territory of the Anishinaabe, the Haudenosaunee, the Patoon, the Wendat, and the treaty lands of the Nisagas of the Credit. The community we work in is the home to many indigenous peoples from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to learn and live on this land. You will notice your mics and videos are muted and the chat option has been disabled. Please note that this program is being recorded and will be made available at a later date. Today's program is presented as part of Gardner Museum's International Ceramic Art Fair programming. And we're excited to have Manuel Mathieu joining us to speak about his work in conversation with Gardner Museum's Chief Curator and Deputy Director and Curator of ICAF, Sequoia Miller. I will now turn off my video and hand it over to Sequoia. Thank you, Sama. Hello, greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening. Um, as Sama said, my name is Sequoia. I'm the Chief Curator and Deputy Director at the museum, and so happy to welcome Manuel Mathieu uh, joining us this evening for this program. Hi, Sequoia. Hello, Manuel. Greetings. <laughs> um, so Manuel is a uh, multidisciplinary artist who works with painting, ceramics, film, and installation. His interests are partially informed from his upbringing in Haiti just after the fall of the Duvalier dictatorship and his experience emigrating to Canada at the age of 19. His art investigates themes of historical violence, erasure, resilience, and cultural approaches to physicality, nature, and spiritual legacy. He has degrees from the University of Quebec in Montreal and Goldsmiths at the University of London. He has had solo exhibitions at the Power Plant in Toronto, Montreal Museum of Fine Arts, and upcoming at the Museum of Contemporary Art in North Miami and elsewhere. Manuel lives and works in Montreal, but Manuel, perhaps we could start off by you telling us where you are right now. <laughs> I am in uh, Guadeloupe right now. I'm on vacation. Uh, just before uh, going to to China for, for about a month and a half. Thank you for uh, for having me, Sylvia. Yeah, and absolutely. For that beautiful introduction. I'd love to actually, before we go into the images um, and your work, I'd love to ask you about um, really about being in Guadeloupe, actually, and about being in the Caribbean, and and the and the thought of and vacation or sort of a, a mental break from where you are. And I'm curious for you um, what sort of how it feels actually to be in the Caribbean now and what sort of mindset it puts you in and what kinds of are there certain kinds of thoughts that you're able to have there that don't happen in other places well strangely enough my first answer would be um we're we're in the in the bay of Dehe right now and um basically I wake up every morning and I I'm connected with the sky and it's something that's really important to me and I can see the sea and the horizon. So it's, um, I think it's a space of a natural expansion, if I can put it like that. So it's important for me to have these kind of mental uh, breaks, if I can, if I can say that, and uh, stay, states of openness, um, which I'm experiencing right now. So yeah, this is it. I have a, Guadalupe has a favorite place in my heart. Let me just put it like that. Yeah, wonderful. I like the idea of states of openness. It's great to um, to kind of to to put yourself to have a way to put yourself in that state, um, especially when mm -hmm. you're coming into producing a large body of work, um, which mm -hmm. I guess is That's coming exactly up for you. exactly. It's actually it's in, I'm happy you pointing that out because I'm just finishing a, a youth body of work that is leaving to China, so uh, it's kind of a a little break before the storm. Because China, yeah. it's another kind of uh, mindset, you know. Absolutely, yeah. It's interesting these um, sort of states of creativity and states of of being generative and kind of where we need them and what we need them and how we need them. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so why don't we go into the slides um, and we can start looking at some of your work, um, and we'll begin here with this piece, um, which is called uh, "The Memory of the Land." Um, yeah. And yeah, maybe I'll just ask you to start speaking about it more, more generally. Well, the, this, about? well, the, the, I mean, when I'm think when I was making that piece and, and working on it, um, it's funny because I started my ceramic practice started in a flat, um, 
flat manner. It was just like shapes that I was cutting uh, on a, on a on the surface. And I start slowly starting building things uh, on top of each other. And uh, and it's funny because for me that material is something uh, almost sacred. You know, you're using the four elements and create something that has a spiritual value. And when you start glazing, that's when you actually I'm turning. I'm becoming a painter again. And I think there's a sense the way I understand sculpture is like collage. You know when you put several elements together and this is a perfect example of that and um and it's funny because the the these elements they sometimes they come from other sculptures you know or residues of other sculptures and I and I put them together that's why I'm referring to the idea of the memory and that that pile of 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 soil uh they it was together and then I I kind of cut it you know cut it open and then I start putting new elements that has nothing to do with it uh, together and, and or reorganizing uh, that that mountain, if I can put it like that. Because for me, I see it as like, a, a, you know, it's a feat in architecture and, and in a conceptual piece where, you know, the memory is something that is um, uh, formless, right? Something that you run after and you try to grab, but then it's very difficult to do that sometimes. So to connect that with something concrete like this piece, um, for me, that's like, that's how I understand uh, the use of ceramic to a certain point. I'm glad that you brought memory into the conversation. It's such a big part of your work and it manifests, I think, in, the, in, in your painting and in your ceramics in related but really distinct ways. And, you know, you've just said how the, the memory sort of becomes anchored uh, to the clay and to the mm -hmm. kind of the, the physical dimensionality of it. I'm curious sort of how uh, sort of how clear that feeling is as you're making the work, as you're sort of bringing the elements together, both the, you know, say in this piece, the kind of the white form, um, and then the more collaged elements. Like how does the how does the memory reveal itself to you or become uh, become graspable as you're working? Well, to be to be fair, there's a there's different kind of memory, especially when when I'm working uh, the clay. Uh, there's a physical memory, you know, because there's there's a point, there's a sense of repetition, uh, and it's kind of like patching certain um, elements together, and 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 it kind of like break a web of of several moments and and several presents together, and and. And, and it's like it's working in an invisible way because you have an idea of what it is, you know, you have a and sometimes, you know, the the um, when I started uh, clay um, for me, ceramics was really um, I really like the idea of not knowing what's going to come out of it. So I had to work a lot with this idea. Well, the physical memory of the gesture, you know, of doing certain things preparing the, the 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 clay you know and all of that but then after that knowing that once it's it's uh you know it's cooked first and then when you're using the glazing you it's kind of you don't know what's going to come out of it so you got to use a certain you got to use your memory of the, the the your understanding of what what is possible but you still don't know what's going to come and for me that's Playing like that with with the unknown is really important to me also as a painter, you know, so uh, the temporality is different because you discover the piece and that's what it is while in painting you go back and forth, you know, it's kind of uh, what you're using can can always take you can always edit it until the end right while you know the ceramic I feel like the moment that it comes out of the comes out it's it's kind of like okay, this is what it is. You can always work on it again and again and again. But then you're you're trying to find, you're trying to experience a Eureka moment in, in, the, in the midst of not knowing what's coming and, and how you, you organize the... And, and I, think, I think to get back to your, you know, to get back to your question, I think the... Um, I think... I think it has a feat in the, the present and in the future. You know, talking about memory, but for me, you know, you're in the process of doing something. You know, your body is 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 for 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 a period of time, the clay completes you. You know, so it's mm. it's taking shape, 
and you're 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 punching it you know what i mean and you're you're putting things together and you're cutting it and then boom there's something that happens but then after that when you put it in the oven you 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 leave it to the future you know you leave it to 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 the possibilities that's going to come from the mix of colors the mix of of of, of the glaze and, and all of that so for me, it's a jump, a constant jump between the present and the future when you're actually making that because you need to think about what it could be, what it might be, what it's going to be, you know, and is this area is going to be darker? And then, you know, so um, I think this jump in time is very different than in painting, you know. I mean, even though sometimes you do a painting and then you leave it in the studio and then you come back in the morning and then you're like, whoa. This is this is what it is. This is what happened. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? All right. You know, I'm, I miss read. I misread that painting. You know, uh, last night. You yeah. know, so I, I I think there's some there's some kind of moments like that. I mean, put it put it in the oven is more drastic. You know, and I I like to say you do it and you do you do this. You know, right. every time it, you, it's you, definitely you, a like, yeah. it's a oh, big leap. Yeah, I, and, I, and I, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. You know. And I've used a lot of those moments of, of leaps because sometimes that some pieces, you know, blow up and they, they glue together or certain parts just fall apart because of the weight of it. And I'm like, yeah, this is great. You know, it's like the material is 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 alive, basically. You know what I mean? You're putting pressure on it and then it just tells you, no, no, you can't do that to me. You know, right. and then it goes like this and then you're like, OK, I respect that. <laughs> I'm a, yeah, you know, I'm a, back. I'm a, back. yeah, I'm gonna integrate your attitude in the process, and uh -huh. I think I think that makes the the medium create. You know, it's it's hard, but there's an elasticity in the process for me. Yeah, you know, uh, when, I, when I think about it, in a way, I think you're also pointing to this other um, way of thinking about memory, which is that clay sort of holds memory. Up. You know, often people will, will refer to the material itself as having memory, really in two senses. So one is that if you you know, often if you bend a piece of clay and then you flatten it out, it will sort of come back to that uh, yes. state. It like remembers yes. where you had put it before and, you know, finds that again. But also clay really as a memory, like as an indexical material, a clay that sort of yes. is absorb uh, absorptive, it like soaks in the kind of memory, the sort of record of a kind of human encounter or, uh, or a natural encounter, material encounter. And in that way, I think clay is sort of saturated in a sense or become saturated mm -hmm. it, it's a know, body it's yeah. a body if you think about it as a body that records everything that you touch and that you leave prints on uh i think it's a it's a it's um it's like playing with a body but then you know depending where you are in the process it's like if you stretch an old body it will react a particular way a, a young one and it's not just in terms of time because i'm seeing young and old there's bodies that has certain experiences you know what i mean and regardless I of age yeah yeah you know it's it's something it's, it's it's has that or it's like reusable clay you know it's something that ha already ha been put together in a particular way uh so and i think um you know this idea of return into dust also i think it's something powerful you know yeah. and i think you know, when I discovered um, ceramics, uh, the first, when I was drawn to that, I was actually intrigued about the capacity to use the four elements in a way to create spiritual value, you know. Uh, and, and for me, that was like, wow, this is, this is, this is really powerful. And it's, I approach it from a very naive perspective. Uh, and then slowly I, you know, I started flat and then slowly I started building up, building up. And I was like, okay, this is something I could have a lot of fun with something i can yeah learn a lot from basically it's one thing i love about your exploration of clay actually that that shift from really thinking of it as a 2d material in a way using it almost like not like painting exactly but it being you know primarily flat and how you're becoming increasingly engaged with it as this as a dimensional material that sort of occupies mm -hmm. space and has this body and um you know looking at this work and thinking about clay as a body a, I want to ask you about the contrast between the mountain, as you put it, maybe the white part yeah. and, and the shard, like the, the kind of cliff or the rocky edge. They have a very different kind of visual sense to them and a different sort of sensibility, um, both in terms of surface and outline and form. So I'm curious how you think of 
of this notion of body or of clay having a body spanning these two aspects or even the three main aspects of this piece? Well, the, the, I'm happy you're pointing different ways that they work together because, again, it's it's like the same process of puzzling, you know, and how uh, you can easily add certain things in a, in a, in a three-dimensional uh, object. And I think, you know, the way... It's a, this is a good example because even though I turn or I'm building an object, um, 3D, you know, I still, for me, the surface is really important. You know, the way that I'm understanding those shapes and how I understand the surface and the process, because I think I'm a part of me is still intuitively a painter. You know, I'm still understanding the surface in a very particular way. And um, I use it as a form of composition. You know, I use it as a form of composition, as a, as a form of tempo. Also, and right now I'm, I'm, I'm understanding these objects that has a very particular kind of patina uh, to them. How do they come into the space and own the space in a very particular way, you know? And if we, and it's, it's a good, it's a good, it's a good exercise for me because I'm not, when I'm when I'm when I'm working the clay, I am not thinking about dimensions. You know, sometimes I think about uh, those sculptures has that could be the size of a house. You know, I'd like to think about them also like that. Like the blue, the blue thing I put in uh, next to the 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 you know this this kind of uh, structure that is next to the mountain, if I can put it like that. Uh, at some at some point, I identified it could be like a figure, you know what I'm saying. And suddenly, you become a giant, right? Playing around with with soil and building these kind of structures that are bigger than life, you know. And and that's it's in the same process that this could be a small building, you know. The ba the building is laying next to the laying on the mountain. You know, and, and that that connection with the micro and the macro for me is 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 really important because uh, I understand that also in my paintings. Mm -hmm. You know, I understand that also in my painting how you need to go close and far away to experience uh, the piece and imagine that you know you could be I don't know half a, a, a centimeter looking at this big 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 structure, which is what we're actually experiencing in the city. You know, we we don't realize that how um, and how also how what how would the dy dynamism of, of a city would change if we had these structures or that that sculpt sculpture in front of us? You know, it's like cutting a piece of a mountain and putting it in the city, mm -hmm. and I think that's that's exciting, um, especially when you're using that material that is actually the ground. You know what I mean? Right. This is actually <laughs> right. a, a piece of land that you're 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 kind of like masticating with your hands, you know, like like you're squeezing and you're trying to find the right way to 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 get into it, you know. And it completes you, like I said in the beginning, you know, it's something um something that actually um it's like an exercise, you know, you're caressing, you're caressing it, you know, and and it responds to you continuously. Mm -hmm. Very important. I love that notion of the shifts in scale that are so possible, both both with painting, but especially with sculpture. And I think in particular with ceramic work too, that um, it's like the maquette can become monumental in a way. And mm -hmm. there's this sort of instability of, of scale in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm also thinking about this, the blue component of this sculpture, that, you know, you referenced it as a figure and thinking about the, you know, the coming back to the, the question of a body and seeing that as seeing that as a body actually as an individual mm -hmm. body and looking at the image on the left, we can see that it's uh, that it's open, right? Like it has an interior, it has an, has an yeah. opening. And if, and if we go to the next image, um, which is a piece called the compass, we can see here yeah. that this this work has an opening as well. And this one's a little bit more um, more body like and there's this you know, deep, deep resonance between a vessel or a container or something with an inside and and us, like us as humans or us as beings mm -hmm. inside bodies. So I'm curious how you, how you see this 
I guess, the question of, of scale and monumentality and body mm -hmm. in reference to the notion of an interior? Well, I, I like the idea that you could walk inside of my work. You know, Sarah, Sarah had a really powerful understanding of the effect that it can have on you to actually enter, uh, you know, the crack of a mountain or something like that. And um, I think what what's interesting about that entering the mountain is that it's it's very so, it's solid, but there's something that is, uh, and is because of the patina of the of the of the of the of the mountain, for example, that there's a certain softness. You know, there's a certain in 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 in, in the, and I like the idea of taking a medium. And I think the process of having something soft you know, shape it as something soft, and then that turns into something hard, and then color it in a way that can either ignite that hard hardness, or actually uh, reminds you that it's actually a soft object. For me, that piece, um, for me, that piece, trying to do that in a way that is inviting you generously to discover it, you know what I mean? It's not like, I'm not trying to hide it, and on the other hand, I'm tell I'm 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 I am uh you know the little rock on top, like the the spiral, uh it's like a you know the, a wink to like a compass or something, as it's something that is gonna direct you somewhere, you know, hmm. or that is helping you in a sort of guidance kind of thing. I, I think it's really it could be it could be a it could be um easily a cap, you know, like a hat that you put in. Uh, with like a, a light a lighthouse. Yeah, you know? yeah, it has that. It almost looks like an eye in that way, like a C, yeah, like a point of. Yeah, and then it's like it's higher, so there's like a 360, and then there's this 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 element that is kind of like has organic patterns on it, but it's kind of broken. You can tell that it was flat, but then it's broken. That's where the puzzling thing comes into play again, where you're kind of putting things together in a way, and then that the beauty of it is the glazing glues everything together again. Right. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like, it's kind of like, for me, th these discoveries, when I was discovering cl clays, it's, it's kind of like uh, how these elements, they can connect together because of what you put on top of them. So it's like, a, it's like putting a, a veal on top of an object, and then that veal gets sucked in by you know, the, the bone of the object. Mm -hmm. and it becomes its skin you know and i think i think it's um i like the idea you could walk in, in in this you know like in between the blue that you see that is on top of it you walk around that you know and and you can ask yourself what is this eye on top of the mountain is seeing you know what is this what where where is it pointing that lighthouse Mm -hmm. you know and again a, a sculpture like that can easily be you know the size of a house what what does it do? You know, is it like a mountain? You know, who 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 plays with apart from nature? Who plays uh that skill at that skill? You know, um, I mean, yeah, I I'm I'm uh I'm happy that you're you you're you're you know asking these questions. You know, how do you see that piece? How do you understand this kind of like because it's like the blue seems like a wave, you know, like a, a kind of like yeah. But it's not a wave, you know. I don't know. What, what yeah. do you What do you think? <laughs> you really so you've touched on so many great aspects of it. I love the idea of it as a mountain, but as one that yields and one that gives, like one like a mountain that has softness or that has opening to it mm -hmm. has a, has a fantastic tension for me. I think, um, and that and that notion of it being like lighthouse like on the top is one that that resonates quite a bit because it does. It's, uh, I think, a panopticon is the other kind of association mm. that I make, which has a, a very different sort of point of origin than um, than a mountain for sure. But it's that notion of like an all-seeing eye or an all-seeing entity. Mm -hmm. um, it also has a mythological, I think, um, association with, uh, with the Cyclops in Greek mythology, um, with a kind of a, a wisdom in a way and a sort of menace, a menace in a, a bit too. Mm -hmm. I think you've also really, in this piece, you really, and in several of the others, but this one especially, you're really emphasizing that softness of the clay, which 
sort of speaks to what how you started speaking about this work that it begins soft and then as you go through the process it becomes hard right it becomes mm-hmm. rock like and permanent and I think one of the most compelling things about ceramics as a medium is that you can as the maker in a way choose to express any degree of softness or hardness that you're interested in in the final work and that's it yeah and in this one we can like really obviously we can see your fingers like we can see your finger marks we can see it coming into being and sort of the weight and the it has again that very kind of body like physicality it's almost like an exhaustive like just kind of being tired and laying down <laughs> you know say that, <laughs> that, blue, that yeah blue piece. Yeah, yeah 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 I'm <laughs> loving it I mean it's funny you're talking about laying down because I was about to underline uh have you looked at like mountains sometimes and and, and project them as pillows mm. you know like it's kind of like the trees are like it's, it's kind of like the overall experience of it they're like pillows and 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 I remember I was I was talking to a friend at some point um I was making an installation in a space and 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 I understood like when you enter a space and you look at the environment the moment that you put your eyes in on the space and that's why I like to look at the horizon because it's really opening it's like while you're looking at the doors and the and the walls, these elements, they become your body. Mm-hmm. You know, they become an extension of your body. And your skin is actually as far as your 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 eyes can get. So the wall becomes part of your body. And, and, and that's the, the way thinking like that really shaped my uh understanding of apparition in in my work as, as a painter. And it's even more obvious when you're uh, making a ceramics because then you can have a perspective of being inside of the sculpture and being outside of it. You know what I mean? And create these kind of elements where, you know, the mountain is hard, but when you're looking at it, you can imagine that this can be easily, it feels soft, you know? And it's a contradiction that is important to me to, to put forward uh, especially um, in a piece like that, for example, you know, where mm-hmm. you have the softness of the shapes and you have something pointing that is actually telling you, don't touch me, but then it's a round element. And, you know, the eye is is actually part of the whole thing. So I think these contradiction, they follow me. Contradiction I've built over the years in my paintings, they're following me in, the, in my, in my uh, ceramics. Interesting. You know, there's also a sort of wet, dry, kind of um, touchability to and and contrast between the the sort of drier surface of the green or the turquoise color and the wetter mm-hmm. looking surface of the of the eye which I think I feel like comes through in a number of your paintings as well actually some sort of more glossy areas and some more dry looking areas gives you a different a different sense of in a way like different parts of the body in a sense some yeah I mean the the you know, the, the skin of your bum is not as the same as the skin of your face, right? <laughs> right? So so I think it's it's normal to have, and it's not just in terms of texture, but it's sensibility. Mm. You know what I mean? It's it's I think it's important to understand that, you know, uh the sculpture is born by touching and creating shape with your hands. And the way you're gonna glaze it and organize it also comes from that necessity to 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 feel the, the object in your hands. You know, because I have a tactical relationship with the piece. You know, the viewer has a visual relationship with the yeah. piece. So how do I turn this tactical experience into a into a into a um, physical one? Mm-hmm. You know, and it sounds it's a simple question, right? How do you turn a, 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 a physical experience experience into a visual one as a sculpture? It's a very simple question, but as soon as you start playing in that realm. Then it's, you realize, damn, it's it's kind of impossible. It's like right. it's like the possibilities are like, you know, my God, this is this, you have that, and the color or the depth of certain glazing and this and that, and then you're like, wow, okay, and and it becomes very very exciting to me actually. It's I'm very super, happy I discovered yeah. that uh, sphere. In, it's a in, super in complex question, actually. Yeah, super yeah. complex around. Yeah, it it is it is, but it's it's part of the game we're in. Mm-hmm. It's part of it's what we decided. You know, I don't think, you know, we don't get to answer important, a lot of important questions in our lives. You know, maybe answer one or two if we're lucky, if we're lucky, you know. 
and the questions like that it's not something necessarily that you need to answer but you need it's more like you need to live with it mm. you know and that's actually more generative than actually trying to find the answer you know it's kind of like it's a quest i'm gonna try you know these pieces are gonna be the residues of that quest and that's just gonna be it you know <laughs> when you right. think about it like that it's kind of like because sometimes the things you discover are not or answer answers for people or for a certain context that are not part of your journey you yeah. know this is pieces there to connect someone with something else that will open doors you know mm. for him or her or in in, in in you know nurture humanity's sensibility to a certain point you know I think uh, so that's this is a good moment to ask you more about this phrase spiritual value which I think one way of understanding that you know what you've just said of the role of this piece is being able to facilitate or answer somebody else's question it's like something yeah. that will exist in another realm is that is that what you see as the spiritual value of the work yeah it's it's about um it's about uh I don't want to say engaging but accompanying people you mm -hmm. know I think what we're doing is to make uh our experience more uh, bearable to a certain point you know mm -hmm. to relate to uh to feel like while you're what you're not just going through but what you're experiencing is shared you know mm -hmm. uh and and shared in a way that is not uh vocally it's not, it's not in a vocal way you know right. it's just in a, in a fleeting way you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and and I think that's precious. I think that's very, very important to preserve our humanity uh, at, 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 a, at a global scale. You know, I think it's very important to, to, to keep that and to, and to operate in that in that sphere, because then when you think like that, you operate from a place of generosity, you operate from a place of empathy, you operate from a place also of letting go, you know, because, you know, everything you're doing is not meant for you to understand. You know, when you're at peace with that, then you can do a piece like that. And then you're like, holy shit, I'm still trying to figure out what is that? You know, I'm still trying to understand what, what that piece is actually doing. You know, I know. And that's the thing with art and with schools and with with kind of things like that is you've learned the language. You know, we both were scholars. We can talk about that piece for hours. Right. How it, how it is. And for me, that's the work, the work in the sense as we're both professionals we can do the work around the piece. We can talk about it. Uh, we can uh, understand the composition. Same thing for painting, understand the composition, you know, the reference to history and this and that, you know, but how it makes you feel and how it transcends uh, a, 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 a sense of reality. I'm not saying this work is doing that, but uh, that's also part of the value of a piece, you know, and that's mm -hmm. personal. That's where it becomes tricky. Because it doesn't have, it doesn't need anybody's approval. You know, it doesn't need like an historian to say, this is good. No, it's just, it stands, you know, it stands because it, it has to stands because it needs to stands, especially for the person who did it. Right. So that's important. And that's for me, that's, it falls in a spiritual fear that doesn't need any approbation or certification or things like that. And you feel it. That's usually how it works. People feel it. You know, something's going on. You know, mm -hmm. something's going on. And it, it's not in the numbers, but it's just sometimes it's in the quality of the work. It's just, it's happening, you know. And that's the sometimes it sometimes yeah. it happens to me, you know. Sometimes yeah. I'm lucky enough. <laughs> I do work, work and I'm you, like, yeah. yeah, and I'm like, ooh, that was as this is this is we're getting there, we're getting there. And that's reassuring, you know. I mean. And then the next day you get there and you're like, oh shit, that was you come back in the morning. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, nah, that was just... I was on a high last night. So, you know, it wasn't that good. But it's okay because again, it's not finding the answers really. It's just sitting with the question and just keep going, you know. Thankfully, mm -hmm. I found I found the questions that nurtures my life and my person as a human being. So uh I'm very grateful for that. That was a long answer, man. I was like, you know, you got into my brain now. So I'm like, this, there's a party going on in there. You know, it's like, choo, choo, choo. <laughs> well, that's in a way, that's like the work of the piece. I mean, I think that there's also a way of thinking of works like this as a catalyst or as a kind of a device that shifts the way you think, right? And shifts the way totally, you Totally, 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 totally. 
that's what we're um, doing yeah yeah I, I want to look at this so we've had this image up now on the screen for a bit I think you and I have been and the folks who are listening have you know had this kind of in our in our heads right now and so let's go to the next image while we retain like the memory of the sculpture and this is one of Manuel's paintings Carte du Monde recent yeah, paintings a map, map of the world yeah so it's that, maybe that, 30 inches yeah. or so like not a huge painting but like you know yeah it's not very big yeah it's not very big uh it's funny to call a piece the, the map of the world, you know. I mean, what do I know about the world? You know, <laughs> I think, I think, I think, I think the strength of trying to map the world is the freedom to imagine it. You know, I think that's really exciting to kind of imagine all the things you 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 see, you thought you see, you saw, or you you want to see also because there's also an imagination. There's that. Um, yeah, so it's a piece that has like, uh, for me, the world is is mainly water. Fluidity is something that's very important to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's a friend of what you said, like fluidity is the medium, is the media, you know? Um, and for me, it is like these these kind of elements um, of, of creating a, a, a watery kind of space and then put, put elements on it as a sense of... Um, signifying a composition you know signifying a, a points of of tension or or uh parts that are actually uh trying to stay alive in that in that kind of architecture or that di dynamic uh on the surface i mean i didn't even ask i didn't even wait till you ask a question i jumped into it but <laughs> That's you, well can you, ask the que you can ask the question now i'm sorry <laughs> i was like so now i have different uh, I'm questions like, yeah, I mean, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know why I just jumped on it. It's because I haven't. I don't know. It's not that I haven't seen it in a while, but the last body of work I've done, there was a lot of fluidity in it, and I think I'm in a stage of doing a lot of these kind of fluid paintings, and I'm slowly getting back to figuration, which is interesting because there's a figure in that painting also, you know, that in is one, looking yeah. at us. Yeah, I feel like there's like a figure. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to create an anthropomorphic experience in in in, in paintings with, like you know, the the, the figure and the, the eyes, or you know, there's a symmetry also in our way of understanding appearance. Mm -hmm. That the moment you start playing with that symmetry, uh, you, you can easily fall into a figurative experience, you know. But yeah. it's it's a conceptual understanding of of that because you know I don't think nature is aware of its symmetry. It's, it's, you know, it's not it's just growing in a way that is uh, you know benefiting to its survival right and that's just if it's symmetric it's just that's just how it was designed you know it's, it doesn't need to understand that mm -hmm. but when you're looking at reality and you're trying to reproduce it or tweak it or multiply it then you use that symmetry in a way as a mode of apparition too and that's the case with that painting from my point of view and how how do you think about um, sort of how much uh, how much to suggest or how much information to give? So a work like this can be read as having a figure in it or sort of edging toward figuration. Sometimes in your painting, it's it's greater. Uh, say in the last work we were looking at, the compass. You know, there was a bit of a figurative reference in there, but the work is obviously you know quite abstract. And I'm thinking sort of how you think of, how you push against that line of how how far to go in terms of representation. That's the one million dollar question, my friend. <laughs> Sorry, because where's the line in what you're trying to show and what is appearing? You know, what, what, where's the line between what you believe that is there and what you believe that is not there? Um, I can only speak from how my brain works. I think the way I'm built, there's always a figurative component into my work. First of all, I need to say that I don't believe in figuration. I think it's a, I don't, I think uh, figuration for me um, lives in a conceptual world first. Okay? You need to have a concept of what you're going to paint or what you're going to represent before it becomes as close as reality as possible. And my intervention with figuration happens in that conceptual space first. You know, because that's why I can, uh, because I operate from that space, that conceptual space, then it's easier for me to tell you that this 
woman that is sitting on that chair is becoming the chair and the chair is becoming that the woman you know what i mean because i'm operating i'm starting the process like that then it's easier for me to blur the lines right mm -hmm. because i'm not saying i'm going to make the figure and destroy it you know or i'm going to make the chair and put the woman on the chair it's like no before it actually appears i'm already kind of moving around and and playing playing like that but it's because i understand figuration as a conceptual experience first now Sorry, the blur I'm, I'm I want to interrupt for a second. Are you moving around and playing with that in your head or on the canvas? Is that something? well, a little bit of both, a little bit of both, because sometimes you want to do something and then your limited understanding of what you're doing gets you places that are sometimes less interesting or sometimes more interesting. And then you have to deal with it. You have to uh -huh. take decisions, you need to play with with your limitations uh and you need to also understanding you need to also understand that well i need to understand i'm speaking like as if i'm preaching but i need preach, to understand <laughs> <laughs> i need to understand uh let's speak for myself i need to understand that there's certain things i know how to do and there's other things that i don't know how to do you know um and i think between the line, I think there's a, the line between the figuration and abstraction, if I want to simplify it, is the same. It's a line that is very close to what you're comfortable of seeing, what you're capable of seeing, and what you're not capable of seeing, hmm. you know? And that line is within any, everybody. That's why, you know, everybody, I like the fact that the piece lives in each one of us in a very particular way. You know, what you're capable of seeing, what you're not capable of seeing. And the capacity of seeing is not through knowledge. Again, you know, it's not about your capacity to connect what you're seeing with hard history. You know, it gets back to what we were talking in terms of spiritual value. How does this object generate something in you that um, that create that, that space of unknown mm -hmm. within your understanding of what you're seeing? I think for me, that's a space that I try to, that is very generative for me and that I'm trying to nurture continuously, whether it's with my paintings, whether it's with my sculpture, because uh, to quote Bergson, it's an experience of something that is forever becoming, which is the closest to reality that I know. This is the most familiar experience to reality, you know? So when I make something that is um, transforming itself and, you know, I don't want to, uh, when Duchamp say we're we're completing the work, the viewer, no, no, it's not about completing the work. It's about existing with it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's about existing with the work, and in let letting letting things happen, accepting that you know we are getting certain elements. You know, and again, it gets back to the patching and the puzzling. You're puzzling things together in your mind while you're moving forward, understanding the painting. And he and he doesn't since it's art. There's a there can be a playfulness to it, but I don't think it can be harmful not to know, you know, because sometimes you don't know and it, you feel like it, you have to know, but you know, it doesn't have to be like that, hmm. you know. So you don't uh, need me to see the figure in the chair, but you don't need any of us to see the figure. No, the I'm not trying to convince anybody. Hmm. You hmm. see what I mean? Even when I was making political works, meaning that I was making work in a dictatorship, when I was painting a loyalty, how first of all, how do you paint loyalty? You know, how, how, how does that how, how is that even a thing? You know, you can start from an image source. And it's I have to say that this painting is the first painting that I, it's a painting that made me understand what abstraction really was. Hmm. When you're sitting with a concept and you're trying to paint something that is impossible to paint. And that's when I start painting. When I get to a point where I feel like what I'm trying to do is impossible, and it's funny, we're looking at a work that's called Carte du Monde, which is a map of the world, which is something that is, in my view, almost impossible to do, right? Um, but that's kind of where I start painting, where I start creating. It's when I feel like I've reached my limits of understanding, and now I'm jumping on a cliff from a cliff of, you know, uh, my intuition, my feelings to a certain point and my projections, my aspirations, right? Mm -hmm. With a, with a, enough assertiveness that I can make one step after the other without knowing, but it's like, there was the saying is like, do you know 
I don't know where to go. It's like, can you see your next step? And it's like, just take that one, you mm -hmm. know, and then you see the next one, take that one. And then it's funny when you operate like that in the studio, then the whole studio becomes a, a, a kind of like, uh, you know, a convulsive experience, an organic experience. I think that we can see that in some of your other sculptural work really clearly. I want to go to the next image, please, where, where I feel like this work in many ways reflects that sort of that taking that next step, that kind of reaching the limit of your knowledge, reaching the limit of your understanding and then starting to work. I was, I wonder if you can speak to that idea relative to, relative to this piece. Yeah. Uh, at that point, I, I wanted to, uh, you know, organize certain organize the the um, the like understand the clay as not as the 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 center point but it's just part of a bigger puzzle you know we were talking about puzzle within the piece of the first one the first mm -hmm. piece but uh right right now to actually to use metal to use uh uh, uh you know the the um the silicone with dust from the studio you know it's kind of like as soon as you, you know, it starts with a micro understanding. And as soon as you go macro, you feel like what you've learned at the mic micro needs to be uh, um, accentuated at a mac micro level. And that's why it was natural to me to start doing ceramics at an at a installation scale, right? Mm -hmm. Because it, it seems like this new material needed its own world to exist, you know? Uh, and you know to 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 give to center all the all the experience on the eye of the of the massif, which is also a reference to a mountain that has like the softness that we were talking about. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of like it's a it's a hair cut, but then right. it's super yeah, heavy. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? And almost, then yeah. yeah, and then you have a phallic and this phallus, and then you can you know, and then the delicacy of the of the fabric that is rubbing that is you know around all these mm -hmm. things. They're they're there to to signify that this is referring this this thing is trying to create its own reference, its own world, yeah. you know, with a sense of accessibility to it too. You know, the idea is not for me to close it because I think there's an openness. I think it's important to cultivate for me in my work that invites people to join in. You know, there's an like there's an entry point. You know, and as soon as you enter, you know, you enter with me and there's, I'm, I'm like, the, the, the piece is, is answering these questions, you know, uh, and sometimes there's no answers also, because I'm not trying to make a complete piece, you know, sometimes as an artist are trying to make the, the, the most, in, like, not important, but a complete piece, a whole, yeah. holy experience, you like know, like a final statement, a sort of, yeah, this is kind resolved, of like, yeah, yeah but then your life is a statement mm -hmm. you know it's one breath you know life is one breath you know it's like if if, if i want to measure my work through that idea that it's one screen you know and then when it when you don't hear it anymore it means i'm gone mm -hmm. and then that's it you know what i'm saying yeah so except the piece, these objects are there though too. yeah but that's what i'm saying these are residues of that right. of that screen you mm -hmm. know what i mean and they the way they live the strongest, it's inside of people. You know, so that's why it's important for the work to be experienced uh, in a in a in an opening in an open way, because somehow the the viewer needs to to exist with it and fully exist with it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to convince you of a way to to see it. You know, uh, that's important to me to to, to kind of like create that dynamism. Uh, in the work, you know? Yeah. Um, I, I want to switch gears a little bit. Um, we don't have too much longer, but I, I really want to ask you about um, a, a reference you made very uh, briefly as you were speaking to the to making political work. And yeah. I, I want to um, hear from you, understand a little better your sort of your thoughts on where the politics is in your work. And in some places, it's been very, it's been more overt, and in other places, mm -hmm. it's been more covert or less less uh, less overt. How do you see a piece like like this one, say that we're looking at, or we can go to one um, 
maybe we can go ahead two slides if we could. Uh, maybe in a work like this, like why days? You... <laughs> maybe this one's too <laughs> obvious of a, of a way to ask. No, this but, it, but it's like... good. It's good yeah. because that piece actually. Um, it, the thing is, it's about the context, right? That piece was part of a show that's called Negro Land, a landscape of desires, mm -hmm. right? And at that time, I was thinking about, you know, uh, me being a black man, about my sensuality, my sexuality, about the possibilities inside of that sex sensuality. Because the, the the challenge we have in 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 the context that we're in in the world right now is that. Uh, a lot of structures are trying to take away our humanity as Black people, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I wanted to talk about my humanity was to my sexuality, my desires, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And But that desire within the context that we're in, um, sometimes it's hard, it's hard to, ex it's hard for it to exist outside of the white gaze, you know. And the phallus, and that's, it's funny because I think maybe I'm a conceptual artist because I use these elements that are very organic and connects them with certain concepts. And strangely enough, they're white structures, but then the balls are like black, like it's like a pupil. Hmm. And, and then it's, it's a fragile object because it's not glued. Meaning that if you bump into the the, the the structure that's holding it, the eye might drop, you know. Oh, or even the, the ball, little black. Even the yeah, the ball. Are... Yeah, the ball. The ball might drop, and 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 for me, that also speaks about the fragility. Yeah, the fragile gaze you know, and the yeah, eyes. Yeah, will, yeah, will, will, you know, will you know what I'm yeah. saying. All these kind of things, and then this is a silicone with dust from the studio. This object, this black thing, is like a phallic, phallic experience. So. There's many elements that are actually in conversation here uh, at a conceptual level, hmm. you know, but I'm still using something that is very concrete, which is the clay, right? Mm -hmm. And I think um, that's why I love oh, what I do is because uh, thankfully I found something that compressed, gives me the possibility for those two things to coexist you know, in powerful ways, you know, and mm. sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work, but to be able to, to connect my body with my soul like that, for me, that's priceless, you know, mm. and it's infinite, you know, because these elements, the, if you, the more you learn, the more you're capable of expending, you know, and, in, 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 you know, where you're, you're expending through your body into your mind and, and this, these up a piece like that is a residue of that expansion from my point of view. Mm -hmm. if, if we can go one one more image ahead. Well, um, we're gonna have yeah. to go to the questions soon. We, oh, yeah, this is a flower. <laughs> as, as straightforward as that. I think so. Right uh, now we don't have open questions, so I'll just I'll just keep asking you questions unless we get a few. So go ahead and pop your questions if you have them into the Q and A. Otherwise, I'll just keep talking for a few minutes. Um, or ask um, questions. You know, the, the, this piece is particular to me because the bottom part, which is kind of like very organic, it looks like it was compressed, mm. you know, and the, the piece that is holding the, the white and the little dot is a squeezed object. If you see it, it has like an imprint of my hands. Like, like I was, yeah. yeah, it's like I did this and then I stuck it mm. into the, to the, to the core of the boom, you know? Mm. So something as a flower that is, that's why I love ceramics, because something that it seems very sensual, right? But mm. to be done, it was very kind of aggressive. You know, you can see the hole in this image on the right where mm. it's kind of, you know. Shoved, and then you shoved put, in, inserted. Yeah, li literally like <laughs> boom, you know, and then you, uh, and then you add this tiny little thing that you glaze before and then you put into it, you know. So, so it's kind of like, you're you're like designing the floor with a hammer you know what i mean <laughs> but then it it because the glaze together comes comes together in a way that gives you a central experience of the whole thing you know and then it it's turned to turn out to be a flower mm -hmm. you know so i think there's a lot of elements of contradictions and and also of growth you know how how does what does the flower need to grow you know 
Um, I think these are simple questions. And what do we need to grow? You know, what kind of soil we need to grow? Mm-hmm. You know, I think for me, these are simple questions that, uh, you know, without no- noticing, we answer that question every day because we, we're trying to survive every day. You right. know, we, we try to create the things that we need. Yeah, that's, that's, but that's, that's exactly where, you know, the experience of freedom we have comes in, you know, and and sometimes we we find it and sometimes we don't because we're constrained by circumstances. And Mm. and a lot of us, me, sometimes I am also trapped in that, you know. Well, I'll ask you, like, how much do you feel like you found that or like you're able to maintain that sense of freedom and openness, which is in a way going back to where we started being in these states of openness and finding ways like where you are now, um, you know, in the studio, like how do you maintain that sense of freedom for yourself? Well, um, I am at a moment right now where I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand freedom, not just in the studio, but outside of it too, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, and by doing many projects that are not just art related, but, you know, so projects that are in, in the community, for example, and things like that, um, and, and revealing certain things also that, was a, that are really important to me. Um, so I feel like I found a place where I can nurture myself. And now I want to make sure that uh, I bring it to certain people and not the work but the space of nurturing, mm-hmm. you know, the space of possibility, the mm-hmm. space of, 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 of expansion, you know what I mean? And, and of balance. I think, I think a part of me is just trying to find a, uh, and it's funny, a, a global equilibrium. So yeah. we're talking about micro and macro, the mountains and things like that. So I think, you know, when you tie my naiveness with my desire to, you know, move mountains uh, maybe I'm, you know, maybe I'm dreaming colors, you know, I'm I'm trying to put together certain things that I can't move, but I'm trying and I'm doing with a smile and, but uh, I don't know, I'm trying to find a, a, an equilibrium, a global equilibrium of the, with, with, within the things I can touch and, and with the people so that I can touch. Mm, that's fantastic. You, you know, I think that's a great place for us to, for us to um, end this part of the conversation. Um, we're we're coming up to um to an hour, but I do see um a question, so we'll go ahead and pose this question. Uh, and then I think maybe just this one. So I'll go ahead and read it actually. So it says I'm um, looking at it. Oh, you are okay. So I'll read it for the folks who. Okay, I'm really interested. Yeah, no, go I'm ahead. I'm gonna read it. Yeah, I'm really interested in the white gaze piece in your exploration of terrains. Terrains and desire and black subjectivity, sex, sensuality, sexuality. I'm curious how you came to choose the materials you chose, clay and wood to mediate and looking on desire. Why chose wood as, as the terrain? Uh, does wood and clay have a particular kind of relationship for you? Well, the, the um, you know, we were talking in the beginning. That's this question from Sarah, Sarah Edo. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Sarah. Um, so, the idea, you know, when you're, I think, I think I understand um, ceramics or sculpture as an experience of collage, you know, of putting different elements together. And while I'm doing that, I'm not actually trying to um, answer the questions in the process. You know, I'm trying to, just like you, you said, like, I'm trying to, take the things that are naturally or intuitively working together for me. And then I'm like, Oh shit, I'm stuck with a piece of wood in the world in the work right now. You know what I mean? I'm like, Oh my God, I have a, I have a piece of wood on, on, on the, on the silicone and dust right now. What is going on? You know, uh, I have, I have to deal with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? I have to deal with that. Um, and that's, for example, for that piece, that's how, that's how it happened actually, because I was, I was like, okay, and, and, and there's another, the other side of the wood is completely rotten, you know? So it's completely rotten. And I don't know if it was rotten from birth or something like that, but it's a piece I, you know, when you're walking in the street and you find an object, you're like, oh my God, this is, 
because I'm a little bit of an animist. I don't think you can you cannot be an you cannot be an artist without being a little bit of an animist. You know, so mm. you're walking around and you you see that piece of wood and you're like, oh my god, this is this is it. It Maybe reminds me, yeah. oh my God, I was in Ecuador like years ago and I saw a piece of plastic that was covering a kind of window, a big piece of plastic. And I was obsessed. I was, I need to get it. I went to the owner. I kind of begged to keep it. I kept it. This thing's been my studio for years. I can't even open it because it smells so bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But then one day I'm going to do a painting with this plastic thing. And then somebody's going to ask, what is going on with this plastic? And I'm going to be, I don't know what's going on with this plastic. <laughs> I just know this plastic has to be there. You know, mm. just like this wood had to be there with this phallic, phallic you know, object and the, the kind of eyes on these white structures. It just worked for me like that, you know. Uh yeah, so, but I think it's a really good question because it's the only piece, it's one of the rare piece, pieces that I, that combines, you know, silicone, wood, uh, 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 ceramics, you know, and, and eventually I want to keep going like that because I think puzzling uh, objects like that makes a lot of sense in the way I understand uh, my work. Uh, we'll see. Yeah. Seems we'll to, see I mean, I think that, I think the piece with on the on the metal legs is you know also includes a kind of drywall mm. or sort of gypsum and fabric and metal. You That's got a point, Sequoia. You got a point. There's there's these elements of wood, of fabric, of of um, I think I think in that quest of redefining um, the purpose of certain elements. I'm naturally drawn into using these things, mm -hmm. you know, uh, and and usually they always have a certain patina. You know, there's always, it's usually things that has been carried or has been had in history before, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's never something fresh and clean and nice, you know, because um, the experience, and it's funny because uh, Sarah, you're, you're referring to that because for a long time, I wanted, my experience with my work was something I wanted to find. I didn't want to create it, you know, and that's why. I've named certain paintings like Patina, uh, and 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 I wanted to kind of, you know, maybe creating an image on a painting is not actually putting something, but it's taking out something until it just appears, you know, um, or or like scratching something until like you know, you know, when you're scratching the six forty nine thingy. <laughs> And you don't know if you're gonna win. It's kind of like it's a, it's a little bit. It's a little bit like that, you know. Um, so I like the fact that this wood had this history embedded in it, you know. So yeah, lamentation. Finding, thinking about finding the painting. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's one of the that that painting i kind of used a, a kind of towel and i was hitting the painting like it, it did something wrong to me it's when it's called lamentation <laughs> I'm, I'm like sending you the feeling of the artist in the studio <laughs> suffering and like bidding the painting and then oh look at this uh i wish it was that easy you know just to hit the painting and find it right. uh, my job would have been like i would have bought a hammer and just have it all the way through but uh sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't you know i think i think there's something uh especially about a feeling like lamentation that makes me think of a grandiose experience you know mm. um in that painting for me it has a feet and a figure something figurative more in landscape you know this could be like cloud of mountains yeah, uh, like you know so i think there's always something about the exterior and the interior you know, it could be or either the the interior of the body, but then there's a reference to ex an exterior experience, like the the mountains. You know, uh, the, I think I think there's um, yeah, I think again, it's like it's a mental collages, mental mm -hmm. mental collage. I think that's how I would actually you know talk about it. The same way I take the wood and the fabric and in 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 ceramic and and the silicone and 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 kind of like expanding in the space uh, as if these things e existed already. You know, we just mm -hmm. found it. We're just entering the room and, oh, the room was like that. And we just found it like that, you know? <laughs> right. How, how does like that alchemy. happen? 
yeah it tells yeah you yeah it, but that's thing. that's that's what ceramic is you know yeah. you take think about it you take four the four elements and you turn it into something that signifies your existence you know this is kind of powerful i yeah. mean that's how i experience it at least so manuel we have one more question do you want to go ahead and and read that yeah one? yeah yeah so you've spoken about your versatility the versatility sorry about my versatility the versatility of clay as a medium and the figurative nature of your painting do you find that you are able to connect intersect these ideas in your work either in the hybrid form or either medium or in either medium i mean totally uh totally because i think uh, I am naturally drawn into finding something human into my work. You know, it's like every time you remember you asked about the line, you know, the line of what you're comfortable and what you're uncomfortable with in terms of seeing. I think me, there's always a moment. Um, and that's why maybe on that, on that um, a compass piece, there's like a, just that object turns this, this kind of like, mountain or this kind of structure into something that could be an eye mm -hmm. you know and i think the um, when you're when you when i'm operating in that space of using the medium the figurative nature of, of the paint or the objects it kind of accelerates your understanding so you're you're operating in a space with different velocity you know because mm -hmm. there's within the same object there's something that tells you this is a mountain but then within half a second you have this thing that tells you no this could be a figure you know but then you're back again but this is like a tower house you know and then while you're trying to make your mind there's also the title that comes into play because the title for me is like if the piece is standing here you take a rock and you throw the rock as far as you can where the rock lands that's the title there's always hmm. a connection between you and the title but between between where you stand in the title, right? It can be complex, it can be simple, it doesn't matter. But there's always a reference, a connection, you know. Sometimes you can deny it, which is fine because there's also a tactic, right? But um, or go against it, you know. Mm -hmm. So these elements, uh, these the velo the velocity of 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 the apparition or or of the understanding of the piece for me is very useful because it forces you to jump sometimes in time or sometimes within yourself, you know, because you're, it's like you're comfortable and then something hits you poof, mm -hmm. and you're like, Oh, but this is, could this be an eye? Could this be a, could that be the tongue of the, cause if this is, you know, and then half a minute after I propose to you a contradict, a complete contradiction. I love doing that in my painting, by the way. It's right. like I'm yeah. I'm taking your hand to go somewhere and then you're like, oh, yeah, the composition is like taking me places. And then you arrive and there's nothing, <laughs> you know, and then you're like, but there's nothing, you know, or there's like something very small, you know. But that's I think that's where I keep a certain playfulness in, in the language. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because because um, because um it's it's i think it's part of the experience to give myself the freedom of painting loyalty uh in relation to the dictatorship and at the same time you know trying to understand what vulnerability can be lamentation can be and then focus on the the the, the these sculptures that are you know bringing a sense of sensuality to the object you know uh yeah. and, and excitement also at the, at the same time so yeah, I, I I think um I think I think I yeah. I think I that's a great a, yeah. I've been speaking a lot. I'm like it's like you must so be much. like, it seems like you really needed to talk, my friend. <laughs> no, not at all. So great, like, I don't so know. Yeah. No, but because your questions are good, you know. Sometimes you get questions and you're like, uh-huh, no, 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 but then you get me hyped up, you know. I don't okay. know. Good. You're good. I'm glad. That's well, cool. it's, it's I've loved hearing you speak about your work. It's really great to to continue to think about it in new ways, which is wonderful. Yeah. And 
Um, for folks who are watching, most of the several of the pieces we've been looking at are on view right now at the Gardner Museum. They're part of our ICAC, International Ceramics Art Fair. So if you're in Toronto, please come by the Gardner, check out Manuel's work, the other works that's there. And um, yeah, keep your eyes out for his work as we move forward through time. Thank you, Manuel, so much for spending some time with Thank us. Thank you for having me, Sikori. It was a real pleasure. Sama Robert. It was a real pleasure meeting you tonight. And thank you for those who attended. It was a real pleasure talking about my work. And thank you for your questions. Yeah, very good. Thank you so much. So have a wonderful evening, everyone. You can see here we have an online talk coming up in a few nights on uh, Friday, June 16th with Courtney M. Leonard and Judy Chartrand. Hope you can join. And Manuel, have a great time in China. Make lots of work. Okay. Thank you. Good night, everyone. I love my friend. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>